America and the state of Massachusetts, understanding what all the urban districts need, every city and town in the Commonwealth, and uh, being a former mayor, understand what we need here in the city of Worcester. I do appreciate what's good about Worcester, we have a lot of good partnerships to get things done. We have a great state, state delegation we partner with, with, this, with the governor's office in the past, and I'm sure with you in the future. But I do have some introductions to make here. We have uh, Senator Kennedy, Senator Goldby, Senator Moore, uh, State Rep Dan Donahue, State Rep David LaBeouf, and Jim O'Day couldn't be here, our dean of the delegation, but he sent Kenny Bergeron from his office. We also have Governor Council Paul DePaulo, and make sure we have everybody here. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the issues we've been struggling with in the whole, really in the whole state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, is housing. Mm -hmm. And our city council has been dedicated to that. And I just want to introduce them. To, we have Councilor Russell, Councilor Rose, Councilor Rivera, Councilor Clorio, and Councilor, ha Councilor Hygiai. I think I get everybody. And it's a great team here in the city of Worcester. That's why Worcester's doing so well. And I just want to also welcome our Secretary of Economic Development, Secretary Howell. Thank you for being here. I'm the Secretary Maddox. Thank you for being here. And also, one of my good friends, Dan Rivera. Thank you for being the head of Mass Development. Much appreciated. Being a former mayor, too. Thank you. Uh, Worcester's very focused on housing now. It's important to us. Uh, whether it be rehab, rehabilitation, or new construction. Now, we put in $28 million into housing this year, and this was with the opera money. $15 million is going to go into uh, the trust fund, and the remaining that is going to go into rehabilitation of existing projects here in the city of Worcester. And uh, I just want to thank you, Governor, and Lieutenant Governor, for your focus and leadership on housing, trying to keep people in their homes. You know, with your tax credits and your tax planning, I think that's so important. Uh, and Worcester's ready to stand up with you, ready to work with you. And I think every urban district, every suburban district needs to step up and address housing. We're only going to be able to do that if we work in the entire state and not up to the urban cities by themselves. So, uh, you know, Steve Tisdale, I want to thank Steve Tisdale for putting this together. Steve. Yeah. You know, Governor, if you have a chance to uh, drive around the neighborhood, Steve Tisdale is over. 20, 30 years has dedicated his life to transforming this whole neighborhood through Clark University or over down here. Look at all the housing he's done. Look at this project right here, 46 units of housing for people here who uh, need affordable housing. And uh, I just want to thank the Carpenters Union for also um, being here today and doing the development. Also want to thank uh, our CDCs make a difference and uh, Yvette Dyson's here from the uh, from the CDC here, here in the city of Worcester, climbing ground. You vet somewhere here, I want to thank you. And Alex Corrales from the Worcester Housing Authority is also here today. And uh, working as a team to make sure that we address our housing needs here in the city of Worcester. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to working with you, working for you. The next secretary you're going to appoint, I think it was a great idea, Governor, that you did that, and much appreciated. Uh, and we have a new city manager and that's doing a great job trying to address the housing issue. Please welcome Eric Batista. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to read my notes here so I can keep it nice and brief. Uh, but good afternoon to everyone that's here today. You can clearly see how important this topic is for not only the city of Worcester, but for the Commonwealth. I want to thank the Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll uh, for making housing production in Worcester a priority. I'll say that again, for making housing production in Worcester a priority. We're grateful for your commitment and, appreci and appreciate opportunities like this to show the responsible work we are doing around affordable housing. I am honored to be a member of the Governor's Housing Working Group, so thank you for that. Uh, and I'm energized by the collaboration across the Commonwealth dedicated to housing, production, and preservation. Today we're here at the uh, site of the Grand Street Commons, and we applaud the Main South City Seed. Thank you, Steve, for their perseverance with this project through the COVID-19 pandemic under his direction. The City of Worcester supported this housing project with $1.3 million of city home funding which was an increase from an original commitment of $800,000 due to the cost increase, mainly due to the pandemic. And I know there are probably other increases as well, Steve. <laughs> we appreciate the additional support from state and federal low-income housing tax credits, MAD Housing, DHCD, 
and mass development brownfields program. Thank you. The transformation of this neighborhood has been incredible to see over the last 15 years, led by the Main South City Seed with the city, state, and federal government as partners along the way. Starting with the Gardner Kilby Hammond project, which included several units of low rise affordable housing, a new bike path creating connections, and the Clark University Athletic Field for the Boys and Girls Club. The Loom Works affordable housing project across the road at 93 Grand Street, a historic preservation project completed by the community builders. And the Brownfields uh, redevelopment of 58 Gardner Street, new home for the headquarters of Table Talk Pies. When we worked together with Table, when we worked together with Table Talk to identify a location for the new headquarters, they were committed to the neighborhood because they knew a large amount of, of their employees lived right here in this neighborhood. With the successful siting of that building, now employees can walk and bike to work. We cannot thank the Commonwealth and the administration enough for being a partner on every one of these projects in the neighborhood, and I look forward to doing even more throughout Worcester as a result of Governor's Working Group and the forthcoming Housing Secretariat. In the meantime, we know that affordable housing projects like 92 Grand Street require creative solutions and multiple sources of funding. That's why the City of Worcester has also been expanding the tools and the mayor made a mention to that our affordable housing trust fund, the first time in the history of the city. There are a number of other affordable housing developments, whether it's Curtis, uh, Curtis Apartments, and we have uh, Alex Corrales here from the Housing Authority, and the Old Boys Club and uh, from Wind Development. And we aim to have inclusionary zoning plan finalized soon. Hopefully we get a finalized plan soon. There's affordable uh, development combined with the hundreds of market rates units springing up across the city will enable us to provide resident with more housing options and allow us to attract and retain a talented workforce and inject new life in our neighborhoods. So I want to thank everybody for being here and I look forward to what's next in this beautiful relationship, not only with the city council, the leadership of the mayor, our state delegation, but also this important uh, administration here at the state level. So thank you. Great, thanks Eric. Um, Listen, it is, it is great to be here today. Um, the Lieutenant Governor and I and our teams are thrilled to be in Worcester. Always great to be in the heart of the Commonwealth. And one of the things that's really special about Worcester and the greater Worcester community is the teamwork and the collaboration. And there's no better example of that than all the partners who contributed to making this happen. So I just want to acknowledge and thank everyone who worked together. Uh, we just had a wonderful tour of, of Grand Street Commons. These are exciting, exciting opportunities, beautiful units, and um, a really, really important project. And, you know, I want to acknowledge, of course, Mayor Petty and our colleagues in government working so hard day in and day out, members of the legislature, as well as members of the city council, governor's council, and others. Uh, this really does require teamwork. Steve, I really appreciate it the opportunity to see these beautiful units um, and the work of Main Street Community Development, all the CDCs, the Housing Authority. I mean, this does require teamwork. And uh, <clears throat> we have wonderful folks who are ready to work with you out of the administration. Our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe, our Undersecretary of Housing and Community Development, Jennifer Maddox. Uh, Kate Racer, you know, many of you have worked with her for many, many years. I just want to tell folks a couple things. One, we understand that for this Commonwealth to move forward, we need more housing. We need more housing now. We needed more housing yesterday. We need housing in every community, in every region all across this state. Right now, far too many families are living with housing insecurity. They can't afford rent. They're facing eviction. They're facing homelessness. Too many are homeless. We've got people who can't afford down payments. Kids who are going to graduate from Clark University next door and not going to be able to stay here because they can't afford a student debt payment and also a rent payment. It is our responsibility as a commonwealth to do everything we can to increase housing. So I am asking as your governor for us to work together. As beautiful as this is, and it is beautiful what we are witnessing today because it represents what is possible. A sad reality is there are 46, 48 new homes, 48 new homes for residents here. Do you know how many applications there were for 48 homes? 1,700. That's what we're talking about. And that's exactly why we've created a Secretariat of Housing, because this state government needs to be in partnership, public-private partnership, 
public-private local partnership, incenting, supporting developers, incenting homeowners right now who may have units available in a multifamily establishment to make more housing available to our families. It is a matter of affordability. It is a matter of equity. And it is about making Massachusetts as competitive as it can be. I also want to give a nod to the carpenters. This is an example of the work that we can do, unions and also developers working together to create greater health, greater well-being, greater opportunity for residents and communities. So with that, I look forward to the work. I promise you this administration is going to be nimble. We're going to be innovative. We're going to be responsible. And the marching orders are, let's get up and go. We've got to make this happen. We've got to make this happen as quickly as possible and figure out ways to do things differently for the health and the well-being, the sake of our great commonwealth. And the person who's specifically tasked with making all of this happen is a person who brings in <laughs> See? teammates, um, is a person who knows this area incredibly well, as a former mayor of Salem, as somebody who's worked hard to promote housing and development and economic opportunity within a community. She understands the needs facing communities and then understands the needs to make sure that communities not just our cities, not just our urban settings, are bearing the responsibility, not the burden, the responsibility of all of this. We're going to work together, and through Lieutenant Governor Driscoll's leadership, I know we will get there um, as we need to. So with that, I give you our great LG. Thank you, Governor. I hope you can hear the enthusiasm. and. Um, and frankly, um, the need. It's a responsibility and it's an opportunity. And I'm so thrilled to be here in Worcester today. I actually had a chance to tour this site in the before stages when it was still under construction last year on the campaign trail. And there's a few things that impress me always about Worcester and particularly about this site is the aligned vision. Cities and great cities don't happen by accident. It takes people aligned towards a vision, folks in local government like Mayor Petty, City Manager Batista, city councilors who suffer through public hearing and zoning hearings and trying to get to the right place, a state legislative delegation who is locked in on making sure this city moves forward, and we think a state administration that's committed to being a great partner in that work as we move forward. Um, so it is great to be here at Main Street South CDC. I not only had a chance to tour this facility, walk the neighborhood, understood what, me what housing like this means to the people who are living here, and the 1,700 people who applied and the 48 who will live here. It's bittersweet when you hear numbers like that, and it is not unique to Worcester any time you're doing a lottery for an affordable housing project. Our housing officials can tell you um, it's always lopsided. With 50% of renters across Massachusetts housing insecure, paying more than 30% of their income towards rent, we know we have work to do, and we're committed to rolling up our sleeves and doing it. As certainly as a former mayor, I know how critical these projects are, and I want to thank and congratulate everyone for making it possible. Projects like this, when we're here at the ribbon cutting and experiencing the finished project, it feels great. But like any hard thing, it takes multiple financing uh, options. It takes a lot of people being willing to, to give a little bit more, whether it's our skilled labor and crafts folks, our city officials, uh, state resources, many places coming together to make these 48 units possible. We know that this housing is going to be a key driver not, here, not only here in this neighborhood, but it's an economic driver of growth across the Commonwealth. And our new housing secretariat, in combination with all of us, is going to put us in a position to increase both our focus and our resources on housing production and preservation, with equity being a major driver of that work. We know, I asked Steve, what's the makeup of the housing? And it's a mix, 60% of AMI, 60% of area median income for folks who we don't do this every single day. That's the person who's handing you something over a counter this morning. Maybe a cup of coffee that you bought. Maybe somebody working in your schools uh, who's in the cafeteria, who's a paraprofessional. Those are the folks we need in our community who often aren't finding it impossible to live. In our gateway cities, our communities that used to be the affordable place to live are no more affordable. Look, it's a good problem to have in some ways. We're a victim of our own success. Worcester's hot. There's investments. There's people who want to come here. How do we make sure we don't lose the character of our communities along the way? We do that by coming together to build housing like this. That's serving uh, the neighborhood. That's ensuring that not only the young adults who might be graduating the young, from high school or from college, but the older adults who want to age in place, who want to stay in their community, that they have a place to do that. And as, administration, as an administration, I think we know 
We need to take on housing affordability by preserving existing supply, by ramping up production, by tackling homelessness, by harnessing housing as a tool for economic no mobility. And that's why we're really excited about the work that we want to do going forward, the ability to partner with all of you, working closely with uh, local leaders. We know we can overcome those current barriers, but it is going to take all of us, all the folks who show up to rail against housing, all the folks who tell us there's reasons why we can't have change in a good way in our communities. Standing up to that, it's hard at the local level. It really is. And uh, we want to be a strategic ally and a partner in that to bring not only the opportunity to produce more housing, but better understand the resources and the support we can provide, whether that's technical assistance, whether that's land, whether that's tax credits, financial support for infrastructure. We know it's going to take all of us, and we are ready to get to work to deliver to that, not just to Worcester, but to so many communities who we're relying on to house the most important people we rely on, on our live, in our lives on a daily basis. So thank you for allowing us to be here to help celebrate what we think is a terrific project and to be your partner, uh, not only for, uh, for um, South Main Street, but certainly for all of you as we think about the work ahead. Thrilled uh, that we were able to have Steve Teasdale leading this effort throughout this neighborhood and certainly want to make sure we give you a chance to say a few words at your own project. <laughs> so thanks so much, Steve, for all you're doing. Yeah, well, thank you very much indeed. It's certainly not my project. Uh, everybody here today, you know, many of you have had a role in this and it doesn't happen without a lot of people working together. So. The mayor has uh, taken a lot of the stress out of this situation by me having to try and remember everybody who is here, and he has recognized most of you, so I can relax and not offend anybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Um, I'm delighted to see uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor, the secretary and the undersecretary here today. Uh, we, we certainly have an affordable housing crisis in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The administration, the new administration, recognizes that. They have a comprehensive paper out as part of their campaign about how they would approach some of the issues that can rectify the immediate challenges that we're facing. And, and, and I, I, I'm delighted to see that they've come to Maine South Worcester neighborhood to, to make a point of this, because this neighborhood is in desperate need of affordable housing. Um, the governor's correct. We had 1,700 applications for 48 units of affordable housing here at the moment. We could have built another 16 of these projects around here, and we still would have had applicants that were left over. And that's not citywide. That's just around this neighborhood. So we're facing a crisis. And Worcester's economic boom and its growth is really it's laudable. We've all wanted Worcester to prosper, but at the same time as we're prospering and we're seeing market-driven development, we're finding that the people who've lived here all their lives have been priced out of being able to afford to stay here, and that is a real concern for everybody. So looking forward to the future, we need to be able to bring the resources to the table to allow us to, to meet this unmet need and to, to develop more of this. And one of the things that we do have in place is we do have a wonderful delivery system in Massachusetts of a housing delivery system. Uh, and the people who've been in involved in this project demonstrate that. I, I know I'm going to forget somebody, so forgive me. But, you know, we look at the beginning. We receive pre-development money from CDAC to initiate this. We receive gap financing and pre-development money from Clark University as a, a, a neighborhood institution who was concerned about the area. We received brownfield funding from mass development. And all of these sites in Worcester have some sort of arsenic contamination problem, and you can't develop them without that sort of funding. So Dan Rivera and mass development were critical in that. We, we've received uh, construction financing from the Life Initiative. $10 million came in to support that. We received, as the city manager mentioned, $1.3 million of home support from the city of Worcester. We've received uh, a commitment of funding from MHP for permanent financing. Clark Ziegler's here. They've been long-term partners with us in all of the work we've done. We move on to the Mass Housing Investment Corporation, the importance of the low-income housing tax credits, both at the federal and state level. And then, you know, we need the state. And so the Affordable Trust Fund, uh, Home Funds, the Housing Stabilization Fund, the community-based housing, 
funding to make sure that we have units that are, are accessible and affordable because housing accessibility for people who need accessibility is one of the unmet needs in this community. So I, I, I'd be amiss if I didn't point out to somebody who the governor had touched on as having worked here for years. This lady could have had a career as a stand-up comedian anywhere uh, in the country, I'm sure, but Kate Racer, over her time at DHCD, has, has, just, has just done an, an amazing, amazing job of running that department, and I, I just wanted to recognize Kate. The only time she's not funny is when she tells me I'm not funded. Uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, next round, yeah, next round. So, um, you know, to put it in, in some context, Worcester has 64% of Worcester's rental population earns less than $50,000 of income a year. So what can you afford on that? Mm -hmm. And the problem is that we're not developing affordable units in the city at the moment. We have a market-driven housing boom. 5,000 units are permitted, only which 6% are affordable. So we need, at the same time, we need to be looking at other methods that we can do to supplement not just state-supported, resource-driven development. We need to look at meaningful and real inclusionary zoning policies that can create 10% affordable units, 10% uh, of units in developments as affordable units. And if we did that, we'd have another 500 units online right now. So we look to the future. We, 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 have, we have a wonderful delivery system. I wish the new administration the very, very best. I know they're committed to this. And let's see what we can all do to work together to get this project, this housing need addressed in the Commonwealth. My last comment is I, I want to point out the contractor who's worked on this job is uh, Stutman Contracting. Did a great job. We've hit 27%, 26%, I think, uh, MBEWE uh, representation on this project, which are high numbers and what we expect from contractors. And the architectural firm of Dominic Hicks and Croc Malnick uh, was the architect for this site. Alberto Cardenas can't be here today, but Justin Barris is representing them. And so with that, I'll say thank you all for being here, and I'll turn you over to Steve Wade. Hi, I'm Steve Wage, and I kind of represent the face of what you're all working for here and the new, in, the new um, program that you're initiating here. I, about 18 months ago, I found out that I was being evicted, not for cause, because of the hot real estate market, basically. And I spent the next 18 months constantly, daily, calling places, going through the agencies, filling out paperwork, getting the help of so many people, and yet I couldn't find an accessible place because I'm handicapped. So I needed some place on a first floor or something like that. Yet, um, through all the help, I finally stumbled on Main South Community Development. And behind me, or behind you, I should say, Governor, is my unit on the corner there. Um, okay. However, representing um, the face of, of what people in the Commonwealth are going through, it's a sad thing because I got this unit in a lottery as, as you've heard, so many people have no option whatsoever. They have no place to go. They're on long waiting lists for years, and that's not going to change immediately, but all of you are doing so much to help the situation, and thank you so much for all of that. Worcester's known as a city on a hill, or seven hills, I guess it is. It's, uh, we can make it the shining city on seven hills, maybe, or maybe 12 hills, or 15 hills, or 60 hills. It's, it's hard to count. It's all one big hill, it seems. Right, Mayor? <laughs> but um, in any case, um, the opportunity exists, the tools exist, the will exists, and all of us want to do so much to help. And I'm donating my time and my volunteerism now to help find housing for so many people. But you people are the ones that have the ability, the will, and the power to do it. And thank you so much for what you're doing. Great. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. thank you for coming out today. Much appreciated. I want to thank the governor, lieutenant governor, for being here and their commitment here to the city of Worcester. Thank you.
you want to do a scrum? <laughs> Start the party. Okay. All set? Well, often, you know, and I think as attorney general, I, you know, in fact, I was uh, in a building earlier this morning where my old office was, and I always, I love coming um, to all parts of the state, certainly love coming to, to Central Mass and to the greater Worcester area, um, and I know the LG does as well. We've said from the beginning we are going to be an administration that is about this entire state and about making sure that resources are delivered throughout the state, that we lift up and celebrate the assets that exist in uh, regions around the state, and it's great to be uh, great to be here today. Well, I've said I'll take a look at any legislation. I've also said that we've got a housing crisis, and one of the things that we've decided to focus on as an administration is increased housing production. You just heard the needs, right? I mean, 48 slots, 1,700 applications, and that story could be told community after community when it comes to housing needs. And so, simply put, we need more housing, and we need to work with our partners in incenting the development of more housing all around this state. Um, I've said all options remain on the table, and you know I've also said that I leave it to, to local uh, communities to determine what's best in terms of, of how they want to handle, handle rent and the like, and we'll look at any legislation. But I think fundamentally my message, our message here today uh, to, to folks across this state is this is an amazing state, but we have an incredible issue when it comes to housing, and the way we're going to get through this is by working together to just simply put, produce more units all around the state. Thanks, everybody.